It's time for the Security Token Show. We're here to bring you the latest and greatest in security token news. Coming from across the globe to your living room. And delivering all the latest STOs and getting you up to date on what's happening in the market. So what are you waiting for? Let's get on with the show. Welcome to the Security Token Show, folks. We're your hosts. I'm Hurry Konings. This is Kyle Solid. We're here in sunny Miami, Florida. And we're here to bring you the latest and greatest security token news. What a week. Seriously, Kyle, what a week we got packed for the, for the audience here. And it's our four-year anniversary. That's Woo! pretty cool. Thanks to anybody that's been watching for that long. If you've been watching since some of the earliest episodes, Drop a comment below. Let us know you're still here. Really appreciate everyone that's tuned in along the way. We're diving into a main topic, talking about all the amazing things that have been accomplished over that four-year period. But before we do that, we want to thank our sponsor, which this week is AmbiSafe's order book, which is that platform that's launched pre-IPO tokenized shares. They've got Robinhood, they've got SpaceX and others, and a ton more in the pipeline. They are an official STM data partner. We work closely with their team. Major shout out to them for doing really cool stuff and delivering real tokenized stocks. Not any of that big stuff that we've covered in shows in the past, but major shout out to Orderbook and NBSafe for making it happen. Thank you. This show would not be possible without our sponsor. So huge shout out to NBSafe and their order book platform. But with that, Kyle, man, I want to get into the top five. And kicking off our top five this week, we're leading it off with the European Investment Bank, the EIB. Now, you may be familiar with the EIB because they are maybe the biggest institutional and government player that's gotten into the tokenization space. This is now their fourth tokenized bond. They're working with a $93 million green bond that's launching on the platform developed by Sweden's SEB and Credit Agricole's CIB. And so this is actually listed on the Luxembourg Securities official list, as well as their, the Luxembourg Green Exchange. And as I said, this is the fourth bond they've launched on four different platforms, <laughs> all of which they were the first customer. They launched one on SockGen's Forge platform. They launched one on Goldman Sachs's GSDAP platform. And they launched one on HSBC's Orion platform. Now they're working with SEB and Credit Agricole to bring another product to market. This is awesome to see the interoperability that comes from issuance of blockchain assets. And that was also their very first green bond. So maybe we'll see more of that as well out of the EIB. And that bond was not possible, Kyle, without number four, which is a company called C-A-C-E-I-S, Cassis, best I can pronounce it, Cassis. I don't know, because it was made by Santander and Credit Agricole, and they probably have a much better way they want me to pronounce that. So hopefully I'll get it right, Kyle. But <laughs> more news is that they got a digital custody license from the AMF. So the AMF is the French SEC over there, essentially. And this was critical in order to power that fourth bond, Kyle, that the EIB just put out. So we can expect that Cassis or Cassius will soon be a player for as a you know custody role for a lot of these institutional bonds. That's my expectation. And don't forget that Credit Agricole and Bank of Santander that launched this joint venture combined have five trillion in assets under custody. So they are some serious players that bring real weight to the equation. And then number three, we have a partnership between DigiShares, a security token advisor, success network member, and Texture Capital, an STM data partner. They're coming together because DigiShares offers a white label platform for investor management, as well as a transfer agent and a lot of the technical issuance pieces behind blockchain-based assets. They've got their real estate decentralized exchange as well. And now they're bringing that and porting in Texture Capital's ATS licenses and approvals in the broker dealer space here in the US to provide liquidity and capital markets infrastructure for the technology that they've built. This is an awesome partnership between two leading firms in the industry that we've known for quite some time, doing some great stuff to bring liquidity to the market. Absolutely love to see that, Kyle. And moving on to number two, big news over out of actually Europe and 
uh, Asia, specifically Japan, Singapore, and Switzerland coming together here. Wow. Asia Next. So Asia Next just received its MAS license. That's the Singaporean SEC. Uh, and this JV is actually responsible from SIX, the Swiss International Exchange, and SBI out of Japan. Hence, those three countries coming together. Their goal to develop a platform to provide international liquidity for cryptocurrencies and, of course, digital securities. So this is definitely a, you know, a dream, a promise, I would say, of tokenization is interoperability between countries, between massive banks across different borders, being able to come together through one platform. I'm expecting big things from Asia next by the end of the year, Kyle. Both of these firms have done a ton of amazing things. The SIX launched the SDX, as we talked about, which is a, the digital arm there. Then also on the other side, SBI launched Osaka Digital Exchange, which we covered just a few weeks ago in this industry. Now they're coming together, bringing another product to market in Singapore. Amazing to see. And moving into number one, this was an amazing headline that I don't think anyone saw coming. INX, one of the leading marketplaces and ATSs in the industry, came to prominence through their their public filing where they sold their INX token to investors, raised $85 million. They then reverse backed some of their equity onto the Canadian exchange as well. So they have a bunch of different trading assets. They acquired the open finance ATS license to really burst into the scene and have listed a bunch of different assets on their platform now on the primary. But they just announced that Republic has made a strategic investment of $5.25 million into the company at a $50 million pre-money valuation with not only opportunities to collaborate and agreements around how that's going to work, but also a very surprising agreement that I found, which was a non-binding term sheet for Republic to acquire 100%, acquire the entire company at a $120 million valuation at some point in the future. Now, it's non-binding, so who knows what the actual terms are there underlying, but fascinating to see. There's a lot of developments here. And Herwig, look, we've talked about this for years in the past. The conglomeration of these different licenses is not surprising. And it's fascinating that we talked about M&A and the investments quite a bit, but this is a huge partnership because Republic is one of the leading crowdfunding platforms. Thousands of companies have gone through their pipeline. So this could be a big, big boon for INX's secondary platform. Congratulations to everybody. With involved. that, that's the top five. Let's head over to Jason this week for the Institutional Updates. Welcome back to the Institutional Updates. I'm Jason Barraza, Head of Growth and Operations at Security Token Market. This week, we have lots of news to cover around banks, blockchain-based settlements, security tokens, and even a hint of crypto. So without further ado... Let's get started in the UK with the testing of Finality's payment instrument and Adhera's liquidity management software. The two integrated with the goal of providing interbank liquidity solutions. This has the backing of 17 major multinational financial institutions, all with an interest in this working out considering they have cash and pools of liquidity distributed among branches around the world. Now to test this, Finality and Adhera's uh, trials corporate client payments from Mexico and Mexican pesos to Singapore received an SGD. The intermediary currency was USD handled through a centralized and tokenized USD liquidity hub. And the Singapore bank was paid with Finality USD. Now, why does interbank payments sound familiar? This reminds me of JP Morgan's Partior blockchain payments network, which has participants including Deutsche Bank, UBS, Standard Chartered, and more. And as an update to this cross-border collaboration, acting comptroller of the currency, Michael Su, recently gave a speech in which he expressed his strong preference for permissioned blockchains over public ones to ensure safety and clearing of legal rights. Considering that he's the bank, U.S. banking regulator, I can't blame him for wanting to play it safe. And according to Ledger Insights, the Partier Network has the green light from the OCC, while the USDF Consortium's regional bank version of this still doesn't. Since then, the USDF consortium has pivoted to a permissioned network approach. Now, based on this speech, it sounds like Michael Su would prefer not to have blockchain involved at all with payments. However, he did say that the most beneficial use case for blockchain is, you guessed it, tokenized real-world assets. So let's shift over to institutional security token updates. Over in Korea, Nonghyuk Bank just announced Shinghan Bank, Worry Bank, and the Industrial Bank of Korea joined their security token alliance. These banks rank three, four, and five in terms of balance sheet assets and are joined by two local banks and six fractional investment firms. 
This comes at a time when the Asian battle for dominance in blockchain technology is well underway. And this announcement sure helps Korea's case in addition to past developments from KB Securities and Murray Assets. In terms of security token alliances, though, it's worthwhile noting that the Western ones are focused a bit more on institutional use cases, while the Korean alliances are taking a more retail-friendly approach. Now, moving on to Deutsche Bank, they get a second shout-out in this segment, now focusing on their recent application with Germany's regulator, FN, to custody digital assets, including crypto. Like Prometheum's recent update, it sounds like they aren't against the crypto, but they would prefer to custody and transact it on a regulated platform, which isn't a bad idea considering all the recent regulation news declaring multiple cryptos as securities. And speaking of institutions and crypto, Citadel, Charles Schwab, and Fidelity, among other household names, all backed crypto exchange EDX markets, which just announced this uh, week that they started trading and received additional funding. They're placing emphasis on one, a non-custodial model to mitigate conflicts of interest, and two, retail only quotes to provide better pricing on retail originated orders on crypto markets. The institutions are smart and starting with only servicing cryptos likely to be deemed commodities like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. This should keep the SEC spotlight on other crypto exchanges and away from EDX markets, buying them some time to further develop and launch their EDX clearing service later this year. Now, this was a packed week of news, and I'm sure we'll see more weeks just like this in the future. So for the most coverage, make sure you subscribe to the What's Trippin' newsletter, join the STA Insights email, and join the STA Success Network. As a quick reminder, the STA Success Network is where you'll have access to our resource library, members-only webinars and panels, and office hours with the STA team, among other benefits. In these office hours, you can ask us anything and everything, whether it's on recent news, or how these things impact your business. Now let's pass it on to Sam Sachs for the market update. Hello and happy Monday. My name is Sam and what action-packed week we have had. Starting with the security token market cap, which is just a hair below $17 billion. INX has had a huge week with a near 40% token pump at very high value, and this is no accident. INX announced that the HAG, HAG, Bitcoin mining security token offering the first of its kind in the Bitcoin mining space pursuant to SEC exemption to Reg D, Reg S is now officially open for investors on the INX1 platform. Backed by Bitcoin computing power, HAG offers eligible investors a brand new option to invest in Bitcoin through hash rate ownership with the security and compliance of the INX1's regulated platform. In addition to the opportunity to own an investment in an industry previously inaccessible, Investors can also expect to receive a share of their mined Bitcoin directly into their digital wallets on a monthly basis. It's a Bitcoin dividend. The INX transfer agent will distribute the dividends transparently and seamlessly in the form of WBTC or wrapped Bitcoin. And even more, INX announced that Republic, a global financial firm operating a digital merchant bank and a network of investment platforms, as we've discussed numerous times, has entered into an agreement with INX in which it will invest $5.25 million in INX at a $50 million pre-money valuation. Now, with following the completion of the investment, Republic will own approximately 9.5% of the issued and outstanding shares of INX. In addition, at the closing of the transaction, Republic and INX have committed in, to enter into a non-binding term sheet in which Republic has an option to acquire 100% of INX common equity at a valuation of up to $120 million pursuant to a plan of arrangement. Now, there's probably a lot more details that we don't know and nuances as it isn't binding. In other news, EDX Markets, the institution-backed crypto exchange, announced that it has started trading and has received additional funding. It was unveiled last September 2022 with backing from Charles Schwab, Citadel Securities, Fidelity Digital Assets, Paradigm, Sequoia Capital, Virtu Financial, and many others. At the time, it was claimed a key differentiator was access via traditional broker dealer rather than a crypto exchange. With the collapse of FTX, now it emphasized a non-custodial model designed to mitigate conflicts of interest. The announcement stated the ADX also introduced a retail-only quote to the crypto market, allowing participants the benefit of better pricing for retail-originated orders. So far, the products supported are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. Notably, these are all more likely to be considered commodities, which is highly relevant given the SEC's litigation with other exchanges as we've seen over the past couple of weeks. 
That's all for now, but have an amazing rest of your week and we will see you next Monday. So Herwig, if we take a trip down memory lane, episode one of the Security Token Show happened June 25th, 2019, four years ago. And in that segment, that was a fully scripted show. It was just you and I. We had a whole lot of things different, but we launched our main topics. And our first main topic was actually the SEC's regulatory approvals or feedback that we wanted to submit for a lot of these private exemptions. And that's actually a great way to start the track record over this last four years. We've had some serious updates and amazing accomplishments since then, haven't we? That's right, folks. Kyle, we've done four years of the Security Token Show. We're proud of it because this industry has taken a long time. Many would consider that too early, but for us, it was not early enough. We wanted to see security tokens rise. That's our, that's our mission, is to see the adoption of this technology. I'm just excited to go through a lot of these, uh, you know, exciting, uh, you know, milestones that I've right. seen in the industry. But it does begin with the first episode. The SEC came out and requested feedback from the industry. They do this quite a bit, where we always try to do on this show to make you aware that you yourself, typically even not even required to be a U.S. citizen, are allowed to submit comments and give your feedback for the SEC to consider and review. And in this case, based on what we said, Kyle, we saw just uh, about a year later or so, however long it took, our feedback actually get adopted and enacted to change the rule for raising for a regulation crowdfund for $1 million to $5 million, uh, which makes it much more uh, swallowable, much more digestible to go ahead and pursue a crowdfunding campaign because it's considerably costly. But for $5 million, it might make sense. Uh, and actually, we saw a whole lot of other milestones with that, Kyle. I would say it's been a, a roller coaster ride. Totally. We saw the ICO you know, craze come in. We covered the, the, you know, the remaining entrance of the Jay Clayton era going after that. We saw the rise of NFTs and DeFi and this kind of new spring, if you will, through the early 2020, 2021. And then, of course, in the last few years, We've seen a little bit of a pair marking again, mm -hmm. especially since the FTX and Terra Luna situations. But more importantly, Kyle, we've seen tokenization also go through its own swings and rise from the ashes, if you will, I think. Now having the biggest banks in the world all talking about it, uh, it's been a journey. Absolutely. I think that it's fascinating to watch, even just when we talk about those rule changes that were submitted we got cited to make those changes and then launched our own crowdfund. And we experienced what that looked like, which has been nearly two years of journey, starting from the beginning of, of planning out what it's going to look like all the way through a testing the waters campaign that we did extensively, not only here on the show, but across all of our channels. We then launched the actual campaign and had all of the compliance needed alongside of it to wrap this thing up, which we're just about done with now. So it's been a fascinating journey all the way through the regulatory components that have powered the financing behind this show. The company Security Token Group that owns Security Token Market, which we put on the show here, also was able to close its own financing throughout this period. So we've seen some great capital markets activity internally, as well as a lot of developments as well from the company. Oh, yeah. And then within the industry as well, I'd like to start off with the fact that before we started the show, there were no platforms live. We were covering the very first STOs that were actually coming out that you can invest in. And we saw the first markets go live, starting with open finance uh, all the way back then. Then we saw the first international listing start to occur. We even facilitated one with our advisory business internationally with Curzio Equity uh, owners. And uh, actually now are listed on T0. Uh, we, we've also seen the launch of STM.co, the brand new version of STO market, uh, the STM's leading source with over 300 securities almost on there. $25 billion in market cap of all these different assets. Fascinating to see. And we've seen it all. Real estate, carbon credit funds, institutional bonds, money market funds, loans, HELOC uh, securitizations, you name it, art <laughs> offerings. It's crazy to see where this this has come, Kyle. What's been some of your favorite things that you've seen in, in the history of this uh, industry so far? I don't think that I fully or saw the volumes of assets that companies like JP Morgan and Broadridge and a bunch of these different 
real institutional players are moving serious weight in tokenized assets. So like when the JPM platform launched for their Onyx platform, their JPM coins, those types of things, Goldman Sachs launching their DAP platform, these same companies just years a few years ago were saying that, you know, Bitcoin is terrible and crypto is not something to be embraced. Just as they were working on a lot of these fascinating institutional adoption. I think that seeing ATSs and marketplaces going live, to your point, it seemed like a Reg A plus would never happen. There was a long time where we just consistently saw that was being shut down. That was a long-term process. Seeing Exodus launch a Reg A plus that was tokenized, get it listed on T0. We've seen so many fascinating opportunities like that. Even Republic getting involved in the space now um, is great to see a lot of these incumbent platforms embracing the gospel. Yeah, I would say it's it's a few dozen here in the United States and maybe almost a hundred around the world, probably in the form of different licenses enabled for custody, for management of the cap table, such as a transfer agent or you know, a CSD type license versus the trading licenses like the ATS licenses. All of this is being doled out by regulators, you know, even specifically more savvy countries are enabling legislation around this stuff. It's crazy to see how far we've come. And even for the US, despite the fact that we've had so much regulatory unclarity, so much security token innovation has come out of this country. Uh, I love to see it, Kyle. I, I'd really get excited for what I'm hearing, which is for most people, which is roughly the next 12 to 18 months, they believe that's when security tokens really are going to take off. The, the rails, if you will, will have been laid out. Enough use cases will have happened. Enough people will have seen the light. And enough time will have passed for compliance, hopefully for some more regulatory clarity and other things to come around where this industry can truly, truly take hold. But to everybody who's waiting, I say you're waiting too long <laughs> because it's happening right now. Offerings are coming out every week that you can invest in right now, as we just heard earlier. INX with a brand new one, uh, new listings, new primaries, new innovations, new marketplaces, new players. It's happening all every single day. And there's no reason to sit and wait, in my opinion, Kyle. Totally right. And we've covered it all here on the show. 195 episodes. We easily cover 15 to 20 articles per episode of this show. We're talking thousands and thousands of content and even more in time researching, studying, preparing scripts. Thanks for all of the editing and production time that our staff has put together here. And over 130,000 listeners across YouTube, across our podcast and audio series. And that's just really, really amazing stuff that we've been able to see in terms of the community coming together, participating and you know, learning about this industry. That's me excited, Kyle. That's why we've packaged everything up. And we, we recently launched That Success Network by, by STA. That's really the ultimate platform if you want to get all of our intelligence, all of our research. We might be working on trying to get this show early access for those who are members. Uh, it's really the place to be if you want to be in the industry, not just listening. Uh, but of course, we're always going to have this available for you. Please reach out to us. Give us your feedback, your comments. How can we make this show better? We've changed it a few times over the years, but not much. Uh, so we'd love to, you know, we'd like to hear that everybody loves the show, but please let us know what you like to hear. As Kyle pointed out, almost 200 episodes of different topics that you can go back and look through, uh, typically easiest on YouTube. Uh, but of course, yeah, you know, I'm excited to continue to hopefully do another 200 episodes with you all. So my last shout out is to all of you who have supported us, who have shared the podcast, who got interested in tokenization because of it. You know, that's what we're here for. We love you. We thank you. And we can only ask for your continued support. And I think that's our main topic. So we are going to dive into our Companies of the Week segment before we close out the show. Let's do it. And to wrap it up with our Companies of the Week is where Kyle and I, we each select one company that we thought made the biggest moves in the space last week. In fact, it puts them in the running for Company of the Year. Uh, Kyle, who do you think deserves such an opportunity this week. Well, my winner this week is EDX Markets. EDX Markets came out as another institutional player offering crypto exchange and custody. And while it's not fully tokenized assets, we kind of desperately need more crypto style of firms because of the, all the sanctions coming down against a lot of these startup companies. 
bringing in that institutional liquidity is going to be very important when driving into this entire economy when building this Web3 ecosystem. So EDX Markets is backed by Charles Schwab, Citadel, Fidelity Digital Assets, and Sequoia, amongst other big players. So this is no joke. And they're also using Anchorage Digital for the underlying custody. So they're doing it the right way. And they're bringing four listings to market first, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and Ethereum. So notably, these ones haven't been named securities by the SEC. That probably makes sense. They're trying to stay as by the book as possible. But it's great to see, again, it's more confirmation that Schwab and Citadel and Fidel, all these huge players know that this is coming. We just saw the IMF come out, I think this week with a press release saying, you're probably not going to be able to stop crypto, so you may as well come out with regulation to support it. It seems like that, again, we're moving back. It seems very cyclical, but we're now moving back against this kind of ban everything with respect to crypto because the benefits just are very clear and they're very real. And so it's great to see EDX coming to market with another institutional. Yeah, I think that's a great choice. I think your company of the week marks a new chapter for the crypto industry that no one will ever look back on as the time that institutions officially came into crypto Mm -hmm. uh, and there's no stopping it. Well, Kyle, mine is not quite on that same flavor. Mine is all about the moves that happened between Republic and INX. And I've got to give my company of the week to Republic. That's a major investment, major foresight. They've always let us know about their focus on crypto and tokenization and wanting to open up a secondary market. All of it makes sense. And you got to recognize just how big Republic is. 2.5 million users, they say on their website. 2.5 billion deployed. Over 2,000 ventures funded, and not to mention the fact that they've acquired multiple companies in the crowdfunding space in different verticals, video games, fashion, crypto, and and you name it, real estate. They brought it all under one roof to really build probably what is one of the biggest conglomerates and players in the crowdfunding space. Now they're moving full in to tokenization with this INX partnership and potentially non-binding, as you pointed out earlier, Kyle, an, uh, an opportunity for them to acquire the company and it seemed agreed upon valuation of 120 million. If that can happen, that makes Republic immediately an overnight major, major player in the tokenization space. So very excited for this move. Got to give them my company of the week because who knows, that might just earn them company of the year if they follow through on their intentions. Major congratulations to Republic. This may be the biggest single piece of news of the year thus far, certainly in the running. I think you're spot on with a huge company of the year nomination. Absolutely. So amazing work from Republic. Huge congratulations to INX, who just continues to pump out all of these great updates. They're working hard in an industry that's that's still kind of stagnant in terms of the development from a lot of those in, in traditional players that have been in this space for a while. They're not letting that get them down. They're continuing to grind, driving amazing adoption. It's great to see. Shout out to EDX, our companies of the week as well. That's it. That's our show, folks. Of course, check us out at stm.co. Check us out on social media. Hit Kyle and I up directly. We're available. Like, subscribe, share, please. Of course, as always. And of course, we hope to catch you next week on Mondays. Happy tokenizing. Thank you.